Say hello to the new SwimOutlet.com. Enhanced navigation, larger, higher resolution imagery, more filtering and search capability so you can find what you need faster. As always, low price guarantee and free shipping on $49. The redesigned SwimOutlet.com. Dive in, say hi. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, May 9th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining me in a few seconds in the Finis Monitor will be Shannon Vreeland. She helped Georgia win its second straight NCAA swimming and diving team title, and now she's making the transition to life as a post-grad athlete. Vreeland will have some help continuing her studies thanks to post-grad scholarships from the SEC and NCAA. So let's bring this incredibly smart woman on the show now via Skype from Athens, Georgia. Hi, Shannon. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, is the uh, semester almost over for you? Yeah, we actually, finals ended on Tuesday, so graduation's on Friday for those that are graduating, so I'm excited for that. Well, congratulations. Is it, does it kind of feel a little surreal that your um, college life is ending? Re it undergrad, is. I, I guess, part of it. Well, I'm graduating in December, so oh, okay. I have a little bit of time left, but everybody that I've been here with for four years a lot of them are starting to graduate and it's kind of weird thinking about the people that aren't going to be here next semester because it's not something I've had to really think about. Yeah. Well, you've got not one but two post-grad scholarships from the Southeastern Conference and the NCAA. Is there like an application process for these? Tell us how you get those. Um, for the SEC one, your school, each SEC school nominates one male and one female from their entire athletics department. It just so happened that this year, both nominees for Georgia were swimmers. So that was pretty exciting. Um, the other one was Andrew Gemmel for our school. And then all of, I guess there's like a representative from each school and they all get together. And your school's not allowed to vote for the athlete like from that school. But then they get together and they discuss and they vote. Um, for who they think should be the scholar athlete of the year and there is like an application process you fill out kind of like your leadership experience and um, any sort of academic awards that they don't know about and like list off your swimming awards or athletic awards um, in order of importance to you um, for that process and then it, it, it's really up to them for the voting and then I don't really know how the SEC one works that's another one you get nominated by somebody at the school and then you fill out another application for that. But that one was way less intensive, I feel like. Well, <clears throat> as if you don't have enough to do, I'm sure all those applications were really intense, but you <laughs> probably were, it was probably harder than doing actual schoolwork because, I mean, these are really important scholarships and you want to make sure you get the right responses that these people want. Yeah, I definitely took a good amount of time, like, meeting with the professors that were writing the letters of recommendation for it and they wanted to know like what exactly my plans were for after school because there was a statement that you had to make about what your postgraduate plans were and so they wanted to talk to me about that before they got into writing the letter of rec so that was i mean it was good i got to know a couple professors a little bit better so well just as impressive i think is getting the sec female scholar athlete of the year award that is impressive that's not just for swimming that's for all sports so how does it feel to be honored as the best female scholar athlete in the whole conference? I mean, just reading the bios um, before they announced the winner was, I mean, I just felt honored to be among those athletes. And knowing some of the incredible student athletes that we have here at Georgia, I was, not, I was honored just to be our, nom our like, nominee. And so to win the overall thing is just, it's super humbling and really, I mean, I'm just happy to represent Georgia through all that. Um, I don't know, I've had so much support here from like the support staff from different professors. One of the professors that wrote my letter of recommendation sat down with me, I think as early as freshman year, to just kind of talk about the direction I wanted to take school and my majors and how to best manage that with sports and everything. And I just, I think the culture here is so great at um, helping you to succeed. I like, I definitely couldn't have done it anywhere else. And then there was that other little thing of helping Georgia win the NCAA team title. Uh, okay. How did winning this year compare to winning last year? They were both totally different. <laughs> like, last year was awesome because my freshman year and my sophomore year, we'd come in second. And so we all just, we wanted it so bad because, I, you know, you'd been like, we'd been so close twice, and then to just get it was incredible. 
Um, this year was kind of, this year was really awesome, and I think it means something a little bit more when you're a senior because you're helping to lead the team a little bit more, like just that much more being a senior. And these are girls you've watched develop. You've been with the girls for four years, you know, and it's just kind of incredible. And also something kind of special this year, I feel like for the first year that I've been here, we kind of came in as, like, it was unexpected that we would do that by the end of the season. Um, I think every year we go in being somewhat of a favorite, you know, like, I know last year everybody said that that was our meet to lose. Um, and then this year, kind of, it, it wasn't as much at the beginning of the year. And then SECs, everybody just stepped up. And I think it was great to see a lot of girls stepping up in places that they didn't know they could. Um, and I think that spoke to just the drive the whole team had over the year to, to prove some people wrong and really get out there and try to, try to win it back to back. And obviously there was a big void on the deck in Minneapolis at, at NCAAs with Jack Bowerly not being there. Um, mm -hmm. How much did that affect the team in Minneapolis? I think, I think it speaks to Jack and his coaching ability that we were able to, you know, get up there and perform. Um, the great thing about swimming in comparison to, like, basketball or football is in those two sports, like, you need a coach there, you know, like, helping make calls, helping decide plays. But, like, most of the, most of the real work for swimming comes on the pool deck. Um, and Jack was able to be there for almost all of our practices and so once we got to the meet we all knew what to do and the coaching staff I mean Harvey's been here for I think like 34 years Steph was both an athlete on the Georgia team and then now she's a coach um, Jerry and Brian have been around forever so it's like they all they were definitely there and supportive and definitely knew what they were doing um, it's, it's obviously hard not having him there um, because he is such a vital part of this team but so it was like a unique experience, but I think it really spoke to how well he coached us during the year that we, we were able to get out there and have the best meet I've been a part of. And it was great seeing the uh, photo on the cover of the May issue of Swimming World magazine where all the girls are jumping into the pool. Mm -hmm. um, I have personally never been part of an NCAA championship team, but I would imagine that is probably the best moment when you all are just getting able to jump in, celebrate a little bit, sing the team fight song and all that. What's, what's the, what was that experience like knowing that was going to be your last jump into the pool? I mean, it was the three seniors kind of all held hands. Um, and we were like, this is the last time we get to do this. Um, and it is, it's so, it's really weird. And it's, it's a great way to end it. Like, I, I mean, obviously, I couldn't have asked for a better way to end that meet. It was crazy. I was up there for the last relay with another senior and we were just like this is probably the last race we're gonna like ever get to swim together and it was just so weird because we'd been on so many relays together we'd raced each other so many times and just knowing that like every little thing was becoming like the last thing you were gonna do it's it's hard but like I wouldn't have changed these last four years so it's not like I I wish I had time left because these I I couldn't have asked for a better four years Absolutely. You've done a lot in those four years at Georgia. Now you're, you're on the other side as a post-grad, so now you can say, now this is the first time I'm doing this or that. Um, how's the past month and a half been like knowing that you um, are now a post-grad? It's interesting. Um, I think I've been very focused on school, um, at least wrapping it up in this past couple weeks. But it doesn't, it doesn't really feel that much different beyond knowing that, like, I guess when there is a practice, I'm not necessarily required to be there. But I think that's, that's what kind of makes it hard for some people. But, I mean, it's the same team, the same people. Um, I love being there. I'm still going to stay here this summer um, and train for the most part. So hopefully well, it won't feel too different. Yeah. I think it will be weird next year, like, having freshmen come in and I'll still be training, but I won't necessarily be part of the team, and I think that'll be kind of a unique experience. And especially not being part of the dual meets. That'll probably be real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love dual meets. Well, I, you know, I, another great thing about being a post-grad is now you get to finally earn some money for your swimming. Um, are you going to any Grand Prix meets to start earning some, some cash? Um, I'll be at Charlotte, and I will be at Santa Clara for sure. Um, I don't know if there are any other ones. Nope, but those are the last I'm two. definitely going to those two. And I guess I'll try to hit some other meets if I can. Yeah, that'll but yeah be that's fun. interesting. I'm not necessarily the best in season swimmer, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Well, you make you make international teams this summer, you make pan packs and you win medals and you get get to earn money. So you can start <laughs> looking that far ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, speaking of um, 
international swimming. You surprised us, or at least me in particular, last last year when you qualified for the World Championship team in the 100 freestyle. Uh, what's the, going to be the big surprise this year? Are you going to go further down into the 50, you going up to the 800? What's, what's the plan for this year? Um, I'll probably swim definitely the same two events, the 100 and 200 free. And then, I mean, I try the 400 every year. There's, <laughs> there's something about it. I feel like I must have some sort of mental block because I love the 500 short course, but the 400 has never been something that's really, really clicked for me. Um, so maybe, maybe I'll finally have my good race in that. That would be fantastic. Um, I guess not the 50, <laughs> the 100 even. Um, I think I was seventh at the 50 um, at trials because I just, that top end speed is really tough for me. So I don't know. <laughs> well, you made it work. You got second place. I mean, you ran everybody down. So <laughs> yeah. stay with what works, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't mind the way I swim it. I like it. It just also gives my dad, my dad a little... He gets a little worked up during the race. Yeah, I'm sure all your teammates, too, were cheering for you. It's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, what's going on with her? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been, it's been great talking to you, Shannon. I know you got a lot to get ready for with, um, with everything for concluding out your college season. But before we let you go, we got to um, submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the show. So the first question, I know you're primarily a freestyler, but if you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Ooh. I mean, can, I, can you remove strokes? Because nope. I'll just take out breaststroke. You can't remove it. you got to keep all the strokes. Um, let's see. I would put breaststroke first. I would leave freestyle last. Breaststroke, backstroke, butterfly, freestyle. Okay. What's a career or job you would most like to try? Um... Hmm. My friend's actually doing something really interesting. He's going to be a litigation consultant in Atlanta, and I think that seems like a really interesting career path because I love law, and I really think consulting is kind of really interesting. So okay. that mixes the two. You think he might want to pursue a law degree? Mm -hmm. okay. that's, the, that's the goal. Oh, well, good. Um, on the flip side of that, what's a career or job you know you would not like to try? <laughs> um. Probably like a doctor, anything where I would see a lot of blood or injuries. Yep, I can agree with you there. What's a rule in the swimming rule book that you would like to change or add? Change. Um, that rule when you get DQ'd for being like on your stomach for too long in backstroke, because I got DQ'd for that all the time back when I was a backstroker. And it didn't help you, like you're just floating, but yeah. DQ'd for it. Yeah, yeah. All right, last question. Where would you like to go for vacation? Mm. Um, probably somewhere in Europe, like Italy. Yeah, Italy. Very nice. Or Greece. Place. Greece. Italy? Hey, anywhere on the Mediterranean is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you get to go there soon, Shannon. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on everything um, you've accomplished in the past uh, four years. We're looking forward to at least two more leading up to uh, 2016. Thank you. All right. And thanks to you as well for joining us for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. Be sure to be a part of Swimming World's followers on Twitter and Facebook and keep track of the latest aquatic sports news at swimmingworld.com. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.